Yo, it's Small Mouth Crush. Today's video, why are you laughing? I got my dad trying to film and he just starts cracking up right now. It's not level. I don't care what it is, Brodus. Okay. Are Go. you okay? Yeah. Why did you start busting out laughing already? <laughs> Yo, it's Small Mouth Crush. In today's video, we're gonna talk about all the different accessories that I carry on my boat. Some things you might have not have thought of and some things that are like, that's obvious, Travis, but I wanna be very thorough in this quick video. Is it gonna be quick? You hope so, right? As he shakes his head behind the camera. That's all coming up. <laughs> Ready? So I don't need the bubble to be level? No. All right. <laughs> so some of this stuff's gonna be basic, some of it's gonna get a little more complicated, and a lot depends on the time of season and the conditions that I'm face when I'm out there. But I'm gonna work from the front to the back of the boat. So of course your electronics. You wanna have clean screens when you're out there. And so a little bottle, 50% distilled water, 50% vinegar, and a rag to keep your, your, cleans, your screens clean when you're out there. There's nothing more irritating than a bunch of grass and a bunch of watermarks on your grass when you're utilizing these all the time. Screen with it. You don't have to go all out and crazy. Like seriously, the best thing for your screens, vinegar and water. So another item that I have is another cord for your handle on your trolling motor. So whatever brand you have, you should definitely have a backup in case it breaks. If, it, if you ever have one break out there, it's very irritating and it's a little time consuming sometimes to get to fix it but it's definitely gonna save you in a pinch. Uh, I definitely have your components for that. So speaking of the trolling motor, I also car carry a spare prop. In fact, uh, if you pan over here, so I actually uh, burned one up just the other day, and luckily I have uh, two in the boat. So I actually have a backup to a backup, which will save you some time. So I could use this that day, but it was making a lot of vibration. Sometimes you'll actually cut it, slice it right off, and you're not going to go anywhere if that happens. So you always want to have a spare prop as well in your boat. So some of the basic stuff that I carry all the time with me, I have a waterproof container labeled license, okay? So I actually have my passport in here, my uh, captain's license, and then I have all the different states marked. So I have my New York fishing license, my Maryland, uh, insurance cards, you'll want to have your registration with you. Uh, here's Lake Ontario or Canadian um, licenses. So I keep this all in bags, that way if you get checked out there, depending on what state you're in, you can quickly and easily go to your license and show it to them. Now there's a couple different things we're going to talk about as far as different regulations. So I follow the federal regulations, but every state and body of water also can have different regulations. And so you're gonna see some overlaps, but you're gonna see a few things different from state to state. So I always like to be prepared. A lot of times when you're in a tournament and you go to a new body of water out of state, uh, there's gonna be rules that are really stupid, okay? But you gotta have the right safety equipment with you. Your boater safety certificate card, a lot of states require you have a boater safety certificate but a lot of states require that you actually have it physically in your possession when they check you. So I know this was a fact, at least in Vermont, if you get pulled over without a card, you're gonna get a fine. Even though you might have it, you need one physically. So I have a copy of it right here uh, that I keep on my possession. And so everything is stored in a waterproof container because obviously we fish big water and we don't wanna get stuff wet. Couple other things that are in here. I have a spare set of keys. So I have compartment keys, I have uh, keys for some items in the truck, and I also have, obviously, a key to start the motor just in case something ever was to happen. I also have a first aid kit. So real simple stuff, bandages, tape, adhesive, just things to, you know, if you get a fish hook in you or something like that, um, you can get bandaged up pretty quick. Now in this bag, I have some other accessories. So I have I have a charging system here that I can plug into my batteries and then it's just a uh, cigarette lighter adapter if I have any any gear. This is I mean I I'll probably never use this but I at least want to have have it on hand. I got a extra some extra cables, uh, GoPro charger. I have some batteries in here, right? So I have a couple AAA's, 
And I also have double A's in here, you know, remote controls, things like that. You never know, you never know. So if I have a cell phone charger in here in case I need it, I got a small lighter that may or may not work. There we go. Lighter with you. Oh. the traffic today. Who the f is that? Interstate 101. Who are those people? They're all illegal. They don't have helmets. They don't have a license. Seriously. All right, listen. I'm going to call 911 on them. <laughs> all right, so back to the video here. So I also have a little cigarette adapter that obviously for my, uh, for my wires. This is basic stuff, but I always have it with me. So I also have a little headlight. I think it's important to have a little headlight with you. Um, if you ever need it, it's going to be handy. Spare set of keys will always be in the boat. Reason for that, let's say I'm offshore somewhere and the wind kicks up and I have to use a different ramp or I have to call a buddy and he has to pick me up or my boat breaks down. At least I have a set of keys right here I can either give them. A lot of times, uh, with my vehicle, my Ford, I can actually keep the vehicle keys right inside of it as well. So a lot of times that will come in handy too. Don't right. you need a horn and a fire extinguisher? We're going to get to all that, Leonard. You just wait. Alright, also in this box I just have some uh, waterproof paper and a waterproof pen sealed in the waterproof bag. I don't know if I want to take some notes when I'm out there. Okay, not that I always do, but I'm just thinking out loud. Let's say, let's say your buddy calls you with some waypoints and your graphs are acting up. I, I don't know. I just have, I'm prepared. I'm covering everything. Waterproof paper, waterproof pen. So I also have a little digital uh, temperature gauge just to have it. It'll help to calibrate your graphs as well. And then I have a lot of different spare sunglasses. Uh, different color lenses are in here as well. And so we'll do that to the so in the description below I'm going to put links to everything you hear me talking about so uh, if you're interested in, in grabbing some of this stuff uh, it should be right there as much as I can find I, I'll let you know so in this dry bag that I keep in the boat all the time bunch of different accessories gloves okay all right so the first thing we pull out of here are gloves and not the ones with the uh, the fingers missing full cover gloves and I wear these when you have one of those magical days where you're catching 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 fish, dude, I just don't like to get my hands beat up. I just, I'll just i throw these gloves on if I know it's going to be one of those days. You can easily go in there and grab them. I mean, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to it. Eric says I have soft skin, and maybe that's the case. But I get beat up when I handle these fish. And so I like a pair of gloves with me at all times. also have a little uh, face mask right here. So... When you're running down in the rain or cold weather, this face mask, I'll throw this on, especially in rain, save your face from getting beat up. I also have just a spare set of pants in here. And then in a bag, I have a waterproof spare set of clothes. So this is just a t-shirt and shorts because it's summertime right now. But if we were fishing in the fall or early spring when the water temp was a little bit colder, I'd certainly have like a hoodie and, and maybe some actual pants with me as well as a backup. So I always keep a spare set of clothes in there. And then I also have a spare set of rain gear. So there's always a spare set. And normally I'm not the one using it. It's my buddies that come out with me and forget to bring theirs. All right, what else do we have here? Let's talk life jackets, right? So I like to use the kind you can just kind of throw on and wear all day. Well, it works for me. The kill switch, of course, a lot of bodies of water now require you to have a kill switch on. Father, your uh, camera's a little, there you go, buddy. I know this is your first time filming. You all right there? All right, so what I have with this light jacket, is I have my whistle. So this is Coast Guard, uh, mandatory to have some type of distress signal. I figure what better spot to put it right on your life jacket. I also have a little beacon in here, if I can remember how to get to it. And you want to check it every so often. So inside this life jacket I have one of these rescue links. So if I was ever to fall out of the boat and 
was still able to like swim and not be unconscious and life is good. I'm just without a boat in the middle of uh, Lake Ontario. Uh, I'll try to swim back, but eventually panic might strike and I might get a little nervous. So I'm gonna pull this out. This is called the Rescue Link 400. So it's registered with their system. So I guess I should look at this a little bit better here. So you switch up, you hit a button and then you hit like send and it sends out your warning that you're in distress and the Coast Guard will get that signal with your, with your GPS. Now I gotta figure out how to put this all back together. We'll deal with that in a little bit. All right, a couple other things I carry in here. A little ore, I think they make you have an ore sometimes in some states. Like this isn't gonna do nothing for me in my bass boat, but I'm legal because the government's amazing and very smart. So I got that in there. Oh, I forgot one thing about that trolling motor up front. And this was a tip a while back from one of my viewers uh, during one of our live streams mentioned how to get shallow. And I've been using it for quite a while. I'll actually, so this is, there's two reasons for this. One is there's water in here. And if I ever run out of my normal water, I got my backup water. Second thing is I'll actually put this in between the trolling motor Let's show them how that works real quick. All right, perfect. So all I do is I'll take this during the day of fishing. If I want to get shallow, I set that right there. And there you go. Doesn't go anywhere. It works perfect. And it just allows me to get shallow without having to adjust the, the whole trolling motor. And I always carry, I have two butt seats, but I always carry one for sure in here, just in case. A lot of times it's going to be used when I'm in big waves and I just need some type of support. I'm not actually sitting on it, but I'm leaning up against it in some of those bigger waves. Another thing that should be on everyone's boat is a push pole. So this push pole is pretty cool. This is a super stick, it's called. Superstick.com. Well compact, it'll fit in your rod locker and you can extend it, make it, make it longer if you'd like. Uh, but that's always in there, you never know. Uh, speaking of that, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the different items I bring when I do get super shallow. So, so a lot of times when you push pulling, that means you're in way too shallow water. You have no reason to be in there either. You came off pad in super shallow water or you ended up getting, getting stuck in something crazy. Uh, tidal water will do that to you as well. So I got the push pull, but a lot of times you have to jump out of your boat and kind of lift it up and give it a push over whatever and work your way out of however you got stuck. And so I carry a pair of water shoes in the boat as well. A lot of times I wear flip-flops, uh, but you know, flip-flops and, and mucky water don't work out too well. And a lot of times I don't like just jumping in to random dirty nasty water where I'm at and there could be metal, there could be whatever. So I just want my feet protected. So I do carry a pair of uh, water shoes in the boat at all times for that specific reason. So back to light jackets. I know we're jumping around a lot. This wearable light jacket that we just talked about, it's actually illegal to have just that in your boat. You need one that you can actually wear and doesn't uh, inflate automatically. So it's legal if you wear it all day, but if you take it off and set it on your chair to go fishing and they pull you over, they want to see one of these in your boat as well. So I always keep, I actually keep three different life jackets in this boat, but this one will always be there as well. I got a kill switch on it, I got a whistle. Pretty sure you also need one of these throw bulls. And technically you're supposed to have it, I believe, at arm's reach at all times. I do that and the thing flies out of the boat. So I like to keep it right here. It is what it is, government, okay? Deal with it. So I also have my uh, fire extinguisher in here. Some states require you to have an anchor. I know it's really dumb. But again, if you're fishing that state and you get pulled over, now federal government, federal waters, I believe you don't have to have an anchor, but some state waters you do. So I got my anchor rope, and I have my little, my little anchor, Coast Guard approved anchor, okay? This won't hold this boat worth of nothing, but I'm legal in their eyes. Of course I got my flares, you guys gotta have your flares with you at all times as well. Man, 
If I didn't have to carry all this stuff, we'd go a lot faster, I think. And we should talk about your batteries. We're, we're heading back to uh, regulations and Coast Guard approved things. All your terminals, whether it be negative or positive, need to be covered in your boat. So you have to have those. They will give you a ticket and you could be disqualified from a tournament for getting a ticket if you don't have that covered. So negative even and See? positive have to be covered. So you gotta have these covers on. Okay, so the back compartment. You can see here I have jumper slash marine radio and all this is is just a my battery ever dies I can uh, use this device here hook it up uh, I've used it in the past it works great I will charge this probably every other month or if I'm fishing a big tournament where I want to make sure this thing's fully charged I'll make sure it's charged up the night before but normally, from what I found, even if I, I charge this in the spring, it'll still be good uh, at the end of the year. I don't have to really worry about it. I just want to make sure. Then I also have a little marine radio in this bag as well. What are they doing there? Why do they got to wreck our video? Okay. So I keep that in there. Um, of course, my call tags. A lot of tournaments we have to use these non-puncture tags. I still I try not to use them. I I've seen it firsthand where smallmouth will drown uh, from these in their mouth. I think the puncture tags are a lot better. But if you if you ask the smallie guys that do this for uh, on a regular basis, they pretty much will agree that they have issues putting these in smallmouth, and I do too. But uh, most tournaments when you call, you can't use punctured devices anymore. I also have a little weigh-in bag in case I ever need one that I store back here. Marker buoy, never know. I got my lure retriever in here. Okay, if I gotta get the crankbait back. Spare spare hub for my prop goes back here. And then we got a fillet knife in case I ever catch a bunch of walleyes and I'm over my limit. <laughs> what? I can't say that? Look in your face. I'm joking. They know I'm joking. Bungee cords. So I normally drive my boat with the power off anyways, but if I'm making a long trip, I'll actually bungee my power poles together just in case something happens. I don't want them falling. You know, I'm talking about a long road trip, 10, 14 hours. Then this here is uh, TH Marine uh, makes this is just a tool to help get your prop off. So you don't need a, a piece of wood. You can just use this. Uh, to change props, which is important. I've never had to change my prop out on the water, but I do have a spare prop down here as well, just in case. So let's talk different times of the year and, and where I'm fishing, what I'll, I'll need for some other things, items I'll bring. Of course, your flogger. Most of you guys know or have seen some videos or have seen me using this bad boy. Works really good during the spawn also has its time and place not during the spawn. What I mean by that is if you're fishing clear bodies of water and you're in 8, 10, 15 feet of water and you see some dark spots down there and you want to get a better look at what that actually looks like, I've pulled out my flogger plenty of times and have seen that it was like a canopy of grass or something different than I thought it was and fish were actually relating to those and like hanging right inside that little canopy or that little teepee you could call it. I've seen it firsthand. Also, we have in this bag, I just have two drift socks, and you can tell I use them a whole bunch because the zipper doesn't even open. So I have two big drift socks that have a time and place. You know, I don't utilize them as much as I used to, but if you're drifting over a massive, you know, say a flat, a 15 foot flat that goes on for, you know, half a mile and you want to drift with the wind, but you want to slow down and work your baits properly. And so this is just another tool. Now I also have drift paddles on my power poles that we'll talk about in a little bit here, but these, uh, these drift stocks still have a time and place. And so when I'm fishing smallmouth waters up north, I'll pretty much always have these in the boat because you just right, never... So here we go, watch right. your fingers. Whoa. What are you doing? <laughs> Big time Jimmy made this extra bilge pump. So on days when I'm going to go far offshore in four, five, six, eight, ten footers, 
I have two bilge pumps in this boat already, but you never know. A lot of times you'll spear a wave and your whole boat's gonna fill up with water. And if you can pump that out quickly, you have a better chance of being able to get back up on those waves and get out of there before your motor gets bogged down with water. So once your boat gets full of water and picture big waves coming at you, you're not gonna be able to get up on pad. And so the back of your boat's gonna be going to be down in the waves as well and water is going to be coming over in both directions sometimes it's like a wash machine and so when your your big motor gets full of water it's not going to it's not going to work and that's when you got to call the coast guard and use your little uh safety protocols that I was showing you and so I don't want to get in that situation so when I'm out there and I know I'm going to be in some big waves I'm going to get this thing positioned already it just fits right into that base there this is a 1500 gallon per minute gallons per hour Oh. 1500 in a minute that would be pretty <laughs> that's a lot you like Niagara Falls in your boat well this is good okay 1500 gallons per hour and then I just have a hose that's clamped on this is gonna be laying down here in, in the floor and we're just gonna throw that over the side and then we have alligator clips with long enough wires that I can just hook this up to my starting battery and uh, away it'll pump and so I, I do keep that in the boat now listen Calm days and stuff, I'm not bringing this with me, but if I know I'm going to be in a tournament and I'm going to get beat up, I think it's a smart thing to have. I also carry this little box with me, and this is designed uh, to help fizz your fish, right? So I have a bunch of fizz needles. Uh, when you're catching smallmouth deep, I can go in there and um, make sure they come back to the weigh-in fine and healthy. I also have these fin clips. Not a big fan of these. Uh, the only reason why I would use these fin clips, and and that would be like if I caught a last minute smallmouth in 30 feet of water and it was an upgrade and I have to literally be back at the ramp in 14 minutes. I'm not going to have time to fizz that fish. I might clip them and, and you know, put a couple just to kind of help balance them out in the live well. I mean, really, it's best just to fizz these fish, but I do still have... Uh, some of these tags in here. All right, we're almost done. Couple last minute things. I always carry a spotlight as well. A lot of times during a tournament, especially uh, on the Chesapeake, I launch at a different marina. It's normally in the dark. It's just nice to be able to have a spotlight. Uh, find yourself, you know, get around in the dark, look for buoys, look for things that aren't marked. So here I got some more sunglasses, depending on the conditions. I got my all natural organic sunscreen, organic lip balm. Got a little healing ointment for my sensitive skin. My remote controls for the power pole as well as the trolling motor. And I also carry this little device here, which is kind of handy. I've had a handful of people throughout the years drop their cell phone in the water while fishing off this boat. And nowadays, people seem to be on Instagram and social media more than they have a fishing rod in their hand when they're fishing. They want to check their stories and see how many likes they got, right? And so. I find it's important. I got a little case where this will actually go right inside. And if I'm on the boat and I got my phone out, it's just extra peace of mind knowing that my phone drops in the water, it'll still float and I'll be able to grab it. Why are you looking at me like that? Why don't you what give kind it to of the phone guy? You got? What's that? Why don't you give it to the guy that's say get off the fucking phone, let's fish. <laughs> because I'm always on, I, I'm on the phone too a lot, man. All right. That's half your problem. Okay. And then little accessories. I mean, I don't know what else you guys want to talk about. I got my net in here all the time. I don't really use it except for tournaments. My call tags are right here on the, in the live well. Ready to go, one through five. Again, I don't like using those, so if I have to, I will. So in here, I got my garbage can, and it's just rope. So when I pull up to a dock, I need to tie up. It's just easy access right there. I just grab it. We talked about the drift socks before. I'm utilizing these power pole drift paddles, which will actually sh slow you down as well. Super convenient. You just kind of turn them to the angle that you want. They're, they're totally secure. The drift socks that I have, I find myself using this a lot more nowadays. I really haven't found a, a time in recent memory where I had to use those over these. So one thing that I forgot to share with you would be an anchor, a big anchor. So inside this crate and blanket is a 50 pound anchor, a Richter anchor. It has 100 feet of rope and chain. And this does come in handy when you have to hold in certain uh, pieces of structure 
uh, especially in some deeper water and big waves. So I bring this along during tournaments. Haven't had to use it in years, but it's always in the truck when I'm on the road just in case. I also keep some boat fenders so when I'm docking and the toolbox that I forgot to show. Sorry about that. Here's another thing I forgot as I was putting all this stuff away. Uh, Aquaview camera, so small camera. Today's cameras are now the size of your cell phone, uh, super compact, but I keep in a waterproof case as well as a case that it comes in. And uh, this does come in handy, especially for smallmouth waters. So remember, a lot of the stuff that I bring on my boat is for big water fishing applications in extreme conditions, great lakes, literally six, eight, 10 foot rollers out there. Uh, is what we'll have to deal with some sometime throughout the season for sure. And all this just helps me become a little bit better prepared and definitely in case there's any emergencies, things like that. So hopefully you guys learned something. Let me know in the comments, what am I forgetting? Also, what are some things that you thought were uh, a brilliant idea, if any? Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.